Hey, I'm Liz, and I'll be testing this REI Skyward 4 for its ease of use, space, rain protection, sidewalls, and much, much more. Before I take you through the actual testing itself, here's just a couple of unboxing shots. This is a four-person Skyward, and I got it from REI because that's the only place you can get it from. First up, I got everything in this black outer carry bag, and there's a small product tag right here. This is what it looks like brand new. Now I'm just going to take everything out and show you what I got out of the box. Okay, so we have the tent body, the rainfly, the outer carry bag that you just saw, and these are the smaller carry bags for the poles and stakes. I also took them out, and I got 10 stakes, 6 orange guy lines, 7 poles to be set up for the tent, and also a pole repair splint in case one of my poles break. Also, you get instructions that come sewn onto the outermost carry bag. For the ease of setup, here's a quick time lapse and also some pros and cons that I found while setting this tent up. For one, I liked that I could set up the entire Skyward tent on my own, and I'm not even very tall, I'm only about 5'3". It didn't take me very long as well, this entire setup, including staking and guying out the tent, took me about 12 minutes. I think that's not too bad. If you need more info on this setup, I put together this step-by-step -step guide which you can find on my channel if you need it. Another thing I liked is that the instructions were pretty good. I actually figured out how to set everything up from just these instructions. There were also small little details like the different colored webbing loops at the front and back, which are blue and brown respectively, and also the rainfly has color-coded red and black toggle webbings. And I also really liked the velcro straps underneath the rainfly because when secured to the velcro on the tent, it feels very secure, much more so than any other tent that I have. However, there are two small things that I didn't like about this tent. The first issue is that there weren't enough stakes if you want to guy out the entire tent. I was short two stakes. And the second and much bigger issue is this. The first time I set this tent up, I found the last leg pole quite difficult to set up. And also, this awning pole here was even more difficult to set up. The first time around, I think I took a good 15 minutes just trying to get this pole into place. It's that difficult. As for the pack away process, I can't say that I was a big fan of it as well. I go through how I pack away my Skyward tent in the separate setup video, so I'm not going to go through that here, but what I'm going to say is that it took me about 12 minutes to get it back into the bag, and that's kind of long for a four-person tent. And that's because the carry bag has a side loading opening, so the opening's not very big, and the carry bag itself isn't very big as well, so it's quite a tight fit to get everything back in. For the base area, I measured the length of the Skyward 4 to be about 98 and a half inches, the width to be about 85 and a half inches. This gave me a total base area of about 58 and a half square feet, which is not too much smaller than the marketed dimensions. On top of the base area, I also wanted to look at how many single pads I could fit into the Skyward 4. Here's me inflating some of my sleeping pads, and here's what four pads or two double pads looks like. I'll put the dimensions of my pads on the screen. Surprisingly, even though my pads are a little wider than regular size, which usually comes in at about 20 inches wide, there's still some amount of space not just at the length, but also at the width. I think it's really nice to have the base area a little bigger so you can actually fit slightly wider pads. And for the queen bed sizing, well, I can fit just one queen bed into the Skyward 4. This E-Tech City mattress is almost the exact size of a queen bed, and as you can tell, there's no space to fit more than just one queen, though there's lots of space for gear. I'll also remove the queen bed so that you can have a better idea of the configuration inside the tent. Basically, you can fit it either down the width of the tent or down the length of the tent. And here's what it looks like. Again, there's loads of leftover space too. The peak height at the center of this Skyward tent comes in at about 78 inches. And of course, I'm not very tall, so I can stand completely upright under the peak height. To reach the top of the tent, I have to stretch my arm upwards as much as I can, and here's what it looks like. I also really liked that I could fit pretty thick 9-inch mattresses into the tent as well, and still stand under the peak height, no problem at all. 
Now, for the lowest height of the tent, that comes in at about 61 inches, and that's in each of the corners of this tent. Here's me walking from the peak height over to the lowest height, and that's about my height, so I could almost fit. On top of just the height and base area, I also wanted to look at the sidewalls and tent shape to get a feel of the livability inside the tent. For this skyward tent, the sidewalls are pretty much almost vertical, and here's what they look like. This gives it a nice cabin shape as well as quite a bit of livable space. I really liked that I could not only stand up everywhere, but even walk around the entire tent like this. Also, in quite a lot of other tents when I sleep at the sides, it always feels kind of claustrophobic. But in this skyward, because of the vertical sidewalls, I don't feel the sides when I raise my arm up, even with four people packed into the tent. Now let's move outside for a bit, starting with the vestibule area. This skyward tent has one vestibule at the front of the tent, and here are the dimensions. It has the longest length of about 99 inches, which is the same size as the inner tent, and the shortest length comes in at about 59 inches if you stake it out as snugly as I did. And the width of this vestibule is about 43 inches, and after doing a little calculation, I found the total vestibule area to be about 23 and a half square feet. Now, for the vestibule sizing, I'm going to fit a couple of different chairs in here to give you a good idea of roughly what you can fit in this vestibule. Okay, so this is my Big Agnes Big Six camp chair, and I'm going to fit it in and show you what it looks like. It kind of looks like it can fit, but the thing is that one of the armrests of this chair is poking into the vestibule fabric, and so is one of the corners of this chair. I definitely think you need something smaller than this. Now, here's a much smaller chair. This is the Hell the Knox chair one, and it fits into the vestibule much better than the Big Agnes chair. But the thing is, when I sit on my Helenox, my knees are like almost touching the vestibule door. I think the vestibule isn't the biggest, it's mainly for gear storage rather than tables and chairs, though Helenox chairs would kind of fit into it if you really need to. Now, moving back to the inner tent again, this Skyward 4 has two windows, one at the front and the other at the back. Starting with the window at the back, this measures about 48 and a half inches by 21 and a half inches. Notice how the zipper doesn't unzip all the way, so when the window's open, there's this little pocket at the bottom of the back window to tuck the fabric in. As for the zipping experience, it wasn't snaggy or anything, but it wasn't very smooth and didn't exactly glide over the zipper track the most easily. But overall, still not too bad, and these are all real-time clips that you see on the screen here. There's no branding on the zippers, no YKK or SBS engraving or anything like that. As for the window at the front, that one measures about 58 by 21 and a half inches. I found it really weird that there isn't a window flap for this window like there was for the back window. This whole thing is just full mesh and is definitely a privacy issue with the vestibule open. I didn't like this. Another thing I didn't like is that there are only two windows in this tent, and there are two entire walls of fabric with no mesh at all. For summer campers like me, more windows is usually always a good thing. The front window is actually on the inner tent door, and I'm going to talk about that next. The zipping experience for this inner tent door is actually really great. I can unzip the door and also zip up the entire door without a single snag at all. And of course, as always, you can check out the real-time clips on the screen here. And I also really liked that these door zippers are YKK zippers. You can see the engraving on the side of the zipper right here. When the door is open, there's one door toggle by the side that you can use to hold the fabric by the side. Now, here are the dimensions. This door has a length of about 59 inches, a width of about 50 inches, and it also measures about 60 inches from the ground to the top of the door. Not exactly super tall, a little shorter than my height, so I still had to duck when getting in and out of this skyward tent. Moving on to the vestibule door, yeah, I really didn't like this very much. I'll tell you why in a bit, but for now, I highly recommend staking down the vestibule only after you've zipped up both sides of the vestibule door. This makes the zipping and unzipping after much easier and also helps with evening up the tension on both sides. If you want to leave the vestibule open, you can tie the vestibule fabric up to the top here. There are two toggles here for you to do that. 
Once you do so, this gives you a slight overhang over your door. It protrudes out about 15 inches from where the door is. And the measurement from the ground to the top of this tiny little awning measures about 71 inches. That's way taller than my height, so I can fit under it just fine. And it's kind of big enough for like three of me. Now, that's all well and good, but here's why I don't like the vestibule door. First, I'm going to show you some real-time clips of me zipping up the vestibule from the outside. And bam, first snag right here. This is because the vestibule has this storm flap, which usually gets in the way of the zippers. And here's the second snag, and the third snag here before I can even get the vestibule shut. I found this super annoying. Thankfully, unzipping the vestibule isn't so snaggy, although there will usually be one snag or so every time you unzip it. And now I'm also going to show you some real-time clips of me zipping up the vestibule from the inside of the tent. And there we go, first snag already from the rain flat on the outside. Moving on to the other zipper track, we have one snag here, and then another snag. Again, three snags in total, just as annoying. But again, unzipping it is pretty great, this time with no snags at all. The two zippers on the vestibule are YKK, so at least I know that they'll last, despite all the ridiculous snagging. I know that the tiny little awning is kind of short, and it doesn't provide a whole lot of shade on the outside. But here's the best thing that I loved about the vestibule. You can get rid of it entirely and turn it into a huge extended awning over the tent. Here's what it looks like when you do so, and it gives you a whole lot more shade, which is perfect for summer camping. Here's how to do it. First, unzip the annoyingly snaggy vestibule door, and the vestibule fabric actually makes up the extended on it. Now, at the two corners of the vestibule fabric, you'll find these grommets, one in each corner, and then you can use these two poles right here, stick the small pole tips into the awning grommets, and set them up. These poles do not come with the tent though, so you have to buy it yourself. You can pick it up from anywhere, I got mine from Decathlon, but you can get it from Amazon or any other camping gear retailer. After getting one of the pole tips into one of the grommets, I tied two guy lines to that pole tip as well, and then secure that pole first by pulling the two guy lines at about a 90 degree angle from each other. Then I do the same thing with the other awning pole, secure it with another two guy lines as well, also at about the same 90 degree angle, and then go ahead and make the last remaining minor adjustments. I just like to make sure that everything's nice and taut, that's all. And there we have it, a nice awning with tons of shade. Here's a closer look at how I set up the poles and guy lines. You don't have to do what I did though, you can just do whatever is easier for you. As for storage, there are four pockets in the Skyward 4, and they're all on this front wall of the tent. I think that was a really smart move, because all the pocket seams will be protected from the rain by the vestibule. Also, I really liked being able to reach into the pockets without getting into the tent, and I could reach the bottom pockets without standing up. So that's two more pluses for user friendliness. I do wish the pockets could have been a little bigger though. Right now, they're not the biggest. The top pockets each measure about 11 by 10 inches, while each of the bottom pockets measure about 17 by 9 inches. As for loops, there's one loop right at the top center of the tent, which I usually use to hang a lantern, and there are also another four loops around it, basically one in each corner of the tent. Here's a quick close-up shot of all the loops in the tent, and apart from the four pockets and five loops in this tent, I didn't see any other storage or features, like for example, there's no power port in this tent. For the heavy ring test, I used this water hose to simulate heavy ring, which looked like this, and I did this for one full hour. After the hour was up, I found that the entire tent was still dry, and there was not a single drop of water inside the tent. Two reasons why. First, I think that's because the tent was very thoroughly seam taped, especially the seams nearer the bottom of the tent, like these corners here. Second, and more importantly, there was absolutely no wind the day that I did this test, so I decided to kind of tilt the angle of the hose just a little bit, and I really mean just a little bit, and I continued to spray water all over the tent. And after just 5-10 to 10 minutes of this, I peeked into the tent and realized that there were a few drops of water on the side of the tent that I was spraying the most rain on. Then I looked up at the mesh and realized that that's exactly how the water got into the tent. The mesh up top was pretty soaked and dripped down into the tent. 
And that's because the rain fly is ridiculously tiny. It covers only the very top of the tent, and I think it's honestly one of the smallest rain flies I've ever seen. Usually, for most other cabin tents, the rain fly would at least extend down the side of the tent by a few inches, maybe 5 to 10 inches or so, and I'll flash a few tents on the screen here for you to check out. On the other hand, this skyward rain fly doesn't extend out very much. As you can see here, the rain fly doesn't extend over the mesh paneling by more than a few inches. The gap between the rain fly and the tent body looks pretty big, and that's why the rain got into the tent. Also, when it comes to rainy day ventilation, again because the rain fly is so tiny, the window got completely drenched, and there's absolutely no way to open this on rainy days for any ventilation. There are also no vents in this tent at all, no roof vents, no floor vents, nothing at all. REI wanted there to be some ventilation from the rainfly gap, so that's why they made the rainfly so tiny, but this is honestly more of a con than a pro in the rain. There is also a gap at the bottom of the vestibule, so at least there's that for some ventilation. On the other hand, for hot days, I like to take the rain fly off to get a little more ventilation through the ceiling mesh, and here's what it looks like. This is also pretty great for stargazing at night. It's not the most ceiling mesh I've ever seen, it's nothing like the Wonderland if you want to compare both these tents, but it's not too small either. Overall, it's pretty decent. Another thing I liked about this skyward tent are the guy lines, and there are six of them around the entire tent. So even with the rain fly off, I really liked that I could still guy out the entire tent with these six guy lines because they are attached to the tent body and not the rain fly. Also, I really liked how all the guy lines have this small reflective strip on them so that you can see them even at night, and actually even the awning straps come with these reflective strips too. I don't usually camp in strong winds, so I didn't exactly test that, but this tent was able to take light winds well, especially when all guyed out. But of course, I wouldn't put this tent through crazy winds, it's still a cabin tent, and this type of tent is not great in wind. Now onto the materials of this tent. The flooring of this skyward tent is made of 150 denier polyester. The rainfly fabric is made of 75 denier polyester, so half as thick, and the rest of the tent body or the canopy fabric is made of nylon. The window zippers are not branded, the door zippers are YKK, there's more info on these in these sections on the screen here, and the mesh is micro mesh because the holes are really small and I found it to be really soft and silky. But I didn't quite like how there are these mesh runs right on the front window, and this isn't even my first REI tent with these mesh runs. All seven poles of this tent are made of aluminum. I didn't have any bending or breaking issues with them. Here's what the stakes look like, here's what the pole clips look like as well. Here's what one of the guy lines look like. That's the tensioner and the reflective strip there, and I found the stuff sack fabric to be pretty good too. I felt that these seams in the Skyward tent were pretty good quality, mostly double stitch, and pretty consistent throughout the entire tent, except for maybe this area here, but that's not a big issue to me. I also didn't find any loose threads in this tent. As for the seam taping, every single seam was perfectly taped. I didn't have any issues with it at all. And for more details on how the seam taping is and how it holds up in the rain, you can check out my separate rain test video that I published to the channel. For portability, I measured the pack size of my Skyward 4 to be about 25 by 10 by 9 and a half inches. Here's what it looks like beside my Coleman two-person sundome tent and also one of my 32 ounce Nalgene bottles. The Skyward carry bag comes with a shoulder strap which I could use for easy carry and there's also a small hand strap at one end, though I don't typically use that at all. And this Skyward 4 weighs about 14 pounds for everything. For pros, this is the only cabin tent I have that actually comes with a vestibule, and this gave me an extra 23 and a half square feet of space. It's not the biggest vestibule I've seen, and the zipping experience can be improved for sure, but I still think that there are more pros than cons to having this. It's really great for storing gear, especially on rainy days. Also, it provides complete protection over the front of the tent from the rain. And most importantly, I could turn the vestibule into an extended awning on hot days, which provided a ton of shade over the tent. So awning on hot days, vestibule on rainy days, I absolutely love this kind of versatility in a tent. It's seriously awesome. 
The next pro is the amount of livable space inside the tent. It's pretty good thanks to the decently high peak height and also almost vertical sidewalls. On top of that, the dimensions are pretty accurate to what's being marketed by REI, which is really nice because I hate getting tents that are way smaller than what's marketed. Another pro is the solid materials used to make this tent. They were high quality all throughout, and the price of this tent isn't expensive as well. I bought this for like 30% off, and I think I definitely got great value for the money I paid. I also really quite liked the door of this Skyward tent. There's only one door to this tent, so that's not great, but it's pretty much problem free and has a lot of pros. For one, it's pretty big, and I think it's about three and a half times my size. Two, I don't need to duck too much when getting in and out of the tent through the door. Three, the zippers are very snag free and here are even more real time clips you can check out as well. And four, the zippers are high quality too. For more info on the tent door, you can go back and check out this test that I'm going to put on the screen here. Another pro is that there is a decent amount of storage in this tent with four really user friendly pockets and five loops, the details of which I'll put up on the screen here as well and I also think that the rain protection isn't the worst that I've seen in a cabin tent. Three reasons why. First, all the seam taping around the tent is actually perfect. You don't have to do any waterproofing prep work yourself, and if there's no wind and the rain comes down vertically, the tent wouldn't leak at all and will keep you dry. Second, the awning pole at the top of the door gives the tent more protection from the rain and prevents water from dripping off the roof and then into your tent. On the other hand, for many of the other cabin tents that I have, the overhang over the door is so minimal that water will drip off the roof and right into the tent, which is obviously a huge con in the rain. A couple of tents that come to mind are the Coleman Sky Dome and also the Caddish Rapid. And third, the vestibule for storing wet gear is always very handy to have in the rain. But of course, the biggest issue with the rain protection is the ridiculously small fly, and we're gonna get into the cons now. REI tried to market this as a waterproof cat style rain fly, but I mean, I would rather have a bigger rain fly that doesn't get me wet if there's wind to blow rain under the rain fly. Before we get into the rest of the cons, if you found this video helpful so far, it would mean so much if you could help me hit that like button. And also, if you happen to buy a tent because of one of my reviews, could I just request that you use my affiliate links in the description below? It would really help the channel out so I can continue to produce this kind of unbiased reviews for you. Thank you, and I really appreciate it. Another con is that ventilation can be better. The ceiling mesh was okay, the door was alright as well, but there could have been a window on this wall, the back window can be bigger, and there could have been another window on this wall too, instead of big blocks of fabric with no ventilation. And also, the setup is very tight the first time around, especially for the awning slash vestibule pole. But overall, I think the number of pros are way more than the number of cons. I'll summarize them on the screen here. And on top of that, I think some of the cons are pretty fixable. For example, I highly, highly recommend setting this tent up in your yard to break it in before you take it out camping for the first time. It took me about three days to completely break this tent in and make it easier to set up and effectively gets rid of that last con. And also, if you have an extra tarp over the tent to shield it from rain and wind, that deals with the small rainfly problem and would potentially be a great tent to have in the rain. So yeah, I really did quite enjoy using the Skyward tent. I think it's a solid cabin tent for the price. It's a pretty great three season summer camping tent, rain or shine, especially if you follow some or most of my five recommendations in this video. But before you buy this tent, I highly recommend that you watch this video on the screen here to see how the Skyward compares to other cabin tents. Maybe one of them might be better for you. Thank you for watching this review video. You're awesome and I'll see you in the next one.